Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another one here. Today we're gonna go and find out if this motor is dead or not. So in the last video, we ended up putting a brand new rotor into this motor and we spun it up to check for the KV value and the KV value came out to 1900 for a motor that should be as specced right on the side of this motor as 1200 kV. So this is what we want to look at today. Now the way that we're going to approach this is a visual inspection of our motor windings. So I can do that by placing a couple images right on the screen. So if we take a look at these images, we can see a couple different things. We see the motor that is brand new and how bright and the copper color of those wires look true to their form. Whereas our motor that has had the replacement rotor, you can see how dark those wires look. They definitely look like they have been stressed at one point or another. However, prior to the rotor installation and checking those windings, I did not think that the heat had such an impact that it went right through and would cause any sort of wires to short out there in the stator. And this is what we are going to try and identify today. The way that we're going to go about this is utilizing the same method that we used in our past video to go and test a brand new motor from the exact same manufacturer just to find out what kind of specifications we are getting out of that specific motor. So let's go ahead, fire up the motor and go through that process. So we have our first phase here being checked. This is going to be the yellow wire and the red wire and we have our multimeter set at AC voltage. Let's fire up the drill and measure, take that first reading. So there we go, we got 674 as our first voltage reading. We will then take our yellow lead on the motor and replace this with the white leads. Now we're measuring red and white. We'll fire up our drill and repeat this on phase two. So we saw about 670 measuring phase two. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch our black lead over to our yellow lead and measure our third phase here. So we wanna make sure these wires are separated so that they don't short out. If they do short out while we're doing this, it's gonna act as a break and it's gonna be making it a little bit more challenging for us to spin the motor up. So phase three, here we go. So there we go, we saw about 674, it was fluctuating a little bit, and that's probably because of the equipment that I'm using. We get some small bit of fluctuation, plus the tolerance that's built up within the windings of our motor. So the last thing that we need to do is go and measure the frequency. We want to know what kind of RPM we just got out of this battery here, specifically because as we go and use our drill more and more, the RPM that we're getting out is starting to slow down. So we're gonna go and measure it this time. I have not recharged this battery since doing the measurements last day. So here we go, we're gonna go and measure the frequency that we're getting. Now we can take that data, place it right onto the radiocontrolinfo.com website and find out what kind of KV value we're dealing with on our brand new brushless motor. All right, now that we've learned our KV is about where we expected it to be, that was a 1500 KV motor, we are going to go and do the exact same test again on our old motor. So again, we're doing the same process here. We're gonna go and flip back to AC voltage and we're gonna start off with our first phase, which is the red and yellow wire here on our motor. So let's fire up the drill and measure this voltage. Okay, so we already know that something is very different than last day. That was 0 0.870 volts. We never achieved 870 volts. So I'm not exactly sure why. Let's continue to go and measure the rest of the windings that we have here, the phases specifically, and then think about what might actually be happening today's test versus our previous test. So I'm gonna flip the black lead and I'm gonna change that for the white lead here. So we're going yellow to white. Now we're actually measuring phase red and white. So let's go spin our drill up. 
And again, we got about 870 in terms of our actual voltage there on phase two. And the last thing that we gotta do is measure our third phase. Let's swap our red wire for the yellow wire. Now we're measuring phase three, which is going to be yellow and white. Let's fire up our drill and see what kind of voltage we get from phase three. So about eight, six, seven. So again, all three voltages were very close in voltage. This is something that we're expecting. We want a nice tight comparison between all three phases. The fact that we got 870 today and we got a different value last day tells us that something within our setup is very different. So now what could this possibly be? Before we go and do that, I do want to spin up our motor, measuring frequency again so that we can get that value just in case it's slightly lower than what we had measured in our previous motor example. So let's go over and change this to frequency and we're gonna continue measuring this phase. It doesn't matter which phase we're measuring, they should all be the same and fire it up. So there we have it. Now we have all the information to go and compute the KV value for our brushless motor. Let's take these wires off and rotate around. We know that we are expecting 1200 KV. 1200 is the goal and we should now be closer to that value versus our test that was done last day. So when it comes to our brushless motor, nothing within the actual motor itself has changed. Everything inside here has been left the same way. The only thing I've done is taken pictures from the outside. So we know that there is no factor being considered when it comes to our motor. However, the only thing that I can think of that is actually causing a difference for us is the actual wires used. I did have to unplug all the wires and I put everything away and I ended up bringing all this stuff back in to be tested and because of that, things are set up in a slightly different way. It does appear that our results are not consistent day to day. So what this tells me is that the wires, they're getting old and I know these wires are old. It's probably purchased around the time that I ended up getting this unit here. And one of the things that I can do at this point is just simply replace them for the amount of measurements that I do within any particular year. It is definitely worth its value to go and replace these wires get brand new ones that will make solid good connections to everything that I want to test. I don't want to run into any of these inconsistency problems. It was not all that apparent to me when I ran it for the first time around. Now, one of the things that I would expect if we did have an issue internal to this motor is that the phases when we measure the voltage each time would be different. That's what I would expect if something shorted out. I would not expect that a short would evenly match all the different phases. And if we saw one phase has a different voltage, that would ultimately suggest to us that there is an issue internal to the motor. So that is something to think about when you're running this test. And that's something that kind of threw me off when we saw the results for the first time. At this point, we've concluded that this motor is actually operating right close to the KV value that is specced on the motor can. Now, this means that we can drop it into a radio control vehicle. Now, typically what I would recommend when dealing with a motor that has shown signs of a potential issue is I would put it into a vehicle that is or does not have as much risk if this were to fail on us and cause other issues. Another point to add to that is I would not use the same equipment long term for the initial test. What I want to do is I want to gain confidence in the motor. I want to run it in a vehicle instead of maybe an airplane where if I did have a failure within this motor, it would bring my airplane down. Instead, what I'll do is probably throw it into a radio control car, get the confidence after running for at least an hour or so that I know that the motor is rock solid and good to go. And I'll do that on equipment that I don't plan on using long term. And then this way, I know that everything's okay and I can throw this motor into its long-term home. So I hope you enjoyed the video guys. That's going to do it for today. As always, like the video. If you do, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.